Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this webinar. Today, I'm going to talk about CRISPR. First, let, give you, let me give you several some background. CRISPR was a thinker technology revolution in recent years. However, this is, the study of CRISPR can be dated to 1980s. During this year, scientists find out repetitive fragments in bacteria. After 20 years, in 2005, it was found out CRISPR can, be, can play some role in bacterial immune system. But the breakthrough happened on 2012 and 2013. During this year, scientists use CRISPR in genomic editing and also apply it in mammalian cells. Since that time, this field has been dramatically changed. You can easily get this point from this publication trend map. Since 2012 and 2013, the publication number in this field go to different, totally different level. In recent years, CRISPR has been widely used in two different fields, such as human therapeutic, agriculture, drug discovery. Currently, Currently, this field has been become much larger and including lateral progresses, lateral proteins. For the beginner or even for some researcher who is focused on specific area, it can be confusing to pick up the specific technology or just understand the whole pictures. If you have a similar question or confusion, then this webinar is just for you. Well, I will give you a general idea of a recent progress on CRISPR field and also help you understand the mechanism of these technologies. Okay, to help you to have a clear image, this webinar includes two parts. First, we will talk about the CRISPR mechanism, which we are further divided into CRISPR on DNA and also CRISPR on RNA based on its substrate. Part two, we will talk about the CRISPR delivery system which will tell you uh, how to deliver your CRISPR product into the target cells. Now let's go to our Wonderland story. So why call it Wonderland? Because I organized CRISPR technology, the major products into the six parts. All these parts correspond to one pearl or one gemstone. And each gemstone can have its magic. First, let's go to DNA Kingdom DNA Cart. DNA Cart is its original discovery in this field. We will use Cas9 for example. If we talk about CRISPR cutting mechanism, it can be very straightforward, just like one, two, three. Step one is to form a complex with Cas9 and GNA. Step two is the complex binding to the target genome. Step three is to cut the substrate and leave a double strand break. This is sound very magic. However, there are a lot of details behind it. Let's take a closer look of a Cas9 complex with its target. In this picture, you should know several concept. First, this is GNA that's directing on it or guiding on it that helps to find the target genome. It will include the two parts, spacer part and the scaffold part. Spacer part can specifically, specifically bind to target the DNA sequence. Once it's targeted, binds to one strand of the DNA, another strand of the DNA will form the loop. So you can easily get uh, understand this, uh, this loop strand fragment will have exactly the same sequence as a spacer. So it's also called a proto-spacer. This loop structure can be recognized by Cas9, and Cas9 has the enzymatic activity to cut a double strand and leave a double strand break. However, we know double strand break is very dangerous for cell, and the cell will recruit repairing system to fix them. So far, there are two kinds of the repairing system that has been widely used, widely studied. That's NIGEG and HDR. First one is NIGEG. That's abbreviation for non-homologous end joining. 
It can fix the break very, uh, very quickly, but not correctly. It often causes some deletion. And sometimes it also causes insertion if there are uh, donor DNA just beside. Another one is HDR. The, the full name is for homologous directed repairing. It's uh, instead it can fix the break accurately, but not so mm, not so efficiently because it's need the DNA repairing process to help the replication process to help repairing repairing process. That's also mean. HDR only happened in S phase of the cell cycle. To help you understand better, I will use the example of our company CRISPR knockout kit. We have two kinds of the knockout kit. First is KN1 kit. This kit uses HDR policy. First, this CRISPR kit can cut the target DNA. And then plasmid donor which include the left homologous and the right homologous will be integrated into the target sites. The second case is KN2 case. It uses different policy, as uh, here is NHEG. The first step are same. It also uses Cas9 and GNA to cut the target, cell, uh, target sites. But the second step, the, they use a linear donor instead of a plasmid donor to be integrated to, into the target place. For the both cases, we have the function we have the functional cassette inside of the insertion parts. And this functional cassette includes a poly A fragment, which will stop a transcription on the target sites. Okay, next we will go to DNA bind, which will rely on dated Cas9. So what's the, the dated Cas9? That kind of, uh, let, uh, let's go to uh, let's go to the go to see the structure of Cas9. Cas9 the activity comes from the two enzymes. Technically, one is the HNH, which will cut binding strands. Another RUVC, which will bind to loop strands. If we introduce a mutation to abolish two enzymes, Cas9 will lose its activity to cut DNA. But instead, it will grasp DNA very tightly. By using this property, we can change the Cas9 as a loading dog for different for different functions. That's mean to fuse into the different effector proteins. So far, there are two ways to link them together. First is direct way. It can fuse the different effector into the Cas9 in plasmid level. Another is indirect way, also called the GNA arm. It's a little bit complicated. You need to insert the target fragment into the GNA. And this GNA will recruit its partner protein. In this case, it's MS2. MS2 can be used to fuse more effective proteins, just like the cascade. Let me give you more examples. If we fuse VP64, VPR or P300, that's an example of activator protein into the Cas9. Under the direction for GNA, it will be recruited to the promote to the target promoter. The activator can change the promoter activity and become more accessible for uh, polymerase. And then eventually will activate the downstream gene's expression. This is just the gene uh, traceable activation. Similarly, we also can fuse the inhibitory protein into the Cas9, which is called CRISPR-I. Or just fuse some fluorescence protein into Cas9, that's called CRISPR-V. That's not all the list. Actually, this list can go very long. In this form, if we, uh, for, um, for example, if you are interested in epigenetic, you can fuse the epigenetic enzyme into Cas9. Uh, then, or if you are interested in uh, nuclear compartment targeting, and then you can fuse the Cas9 into some marker proteins. I will not go to every details of this form. If you are interested in, you can search it on our website. Okay, next we will go to the DNA editor. 
In terms of a DNA editor, I have two things to stress. First, DNA editor actually can be connected with the Dedicast 9. However, most potent DNA editor now currently now use Cas9 Nikes. Why? Because Cas9 Nikes has some specialty. Here is the structure of Cas9. Uh, as we have talked, Cas9 has two activities. That Cas9 will abolish two activities together. But if we abolish one of them, such as use D840, 4D to abolish HNH, or D10 to abolish RUVC, then it causes the Nikes. You can guess the Nikes has two activities. It has a cut activities just like a wild type of Cas9, or binding activities just like a dead Cas9. This specialty is very helpful in, in promoting DNA editor efficiency. Another point I want to stress here is when I talk about the DNA editing, I mentioned editing with precision instead of a random editing. So far, there are three selections to edit with precision. First is HDR. We have talked this talk about this in DNA cut. However, we already know the HDR is not so time uh, is not so effective and pretty time consuming. So the scientists are looking for the more powerful tools. So far, there's two selections in the toolbox. One is dependent on the deaminase. Another is called prime editing, which is dependent on reverse transcriptase. For deaminase, uh, it often uses D10A nikase as its partner, where prime editing will use D840 nikase as its partner. Let's go to more details of these tools. In case of a deaminase, based on its activity, it has a two technologies. One is ABE, that's for adenine-based editor. It can change adenosine to the inosine and eventually to G. It uses uh, TIDA as its deaminase. For CBE, it can change cytosine to uridine and then to T. It will use apple back one as deaminase. If you want to design the deaminase uh, editor, you possibly need to know how to select a specific uh, sequence and how to screen the mutation. I couldn't cover all these details in this webinar. If you are interested in this topic, please leave the feedback or message to us. We would like to cover these talk, talk, topics in future talks. Okay, next is prime editing. This method has been published on 2019 by uh, Professor David Liu. This is, can be called breakthrough in this field because we know if we select the deaminase, you only have a few selection you're only able to change A to G or C to T, but you cannot change A to C or etc. However, using prime editing, it can break the limitation of this selection. It can change any base to any one you want it to be. Another difference is that this activity is, de is dependent on reverse transcriptase. If you want to know details, you can go to search for this publication, or you just let us know your favorite topic. Okay, we just covered the uh, CRISPR on DNA. Next, we will talk about the CRISPR on RNA. In many aspects, CRISPR on RNA is just a counterpart for CRISPR on DNA. First, but it still have some uh, have its own specialties. First, we will uh, talk about the RNA cut. RNA cut will ha also have its star members, that's Cas13. We can compare the uh, difference of Cas9 and Cas13. We know Cas9 has double enzymatic activity, it can cut double strand of DNA, but for RNA, it only has one strand. So Cas13 only has one specific, specific cut activity. However, at the same time, CAS13 also have a non-specific activity. It shows here. 
So that means when CAT 13 bind to the target RNA, it's not only can specifically cut uh, binding RNA, but also can non-specifically cut RNA oligos, which is physically close to this enzyme. Another big difference about CAT9 and CAT 13 is the consequence. This DNA cut will lead to double will lead to double strand break, and then finally got, uh, finally lead to DNA repair me mechanism. But for RNA cut, RNA will, fragment will lose the protection from its from its five end and the three end, so will become e very easily degraded. Okay, next we will talk. Uh, um, RNA bind. Just like the DNA bind, RNA bind also rely on that CAT13. We already know CAT13 has two different uh, enzymatic activity. Specific enzymatic activity also called cis cleavage, or non-specific activity also called trans, uh, trans cleavage. If we introduce a mutation to abolish these two activities, we can get that CAT13. Just like that Cas9, that Cas13 can grasp the RNA very tightly. We also can use this property to fuse different uh, effectors. This form is commonly used effector on RNA fusion protein. For example, if you are interested in RNA, methylase, RNA methylation, you can fuse RNA methylase or RNA demethylase on Cas13, and then you will be able to observe the uh, change of RNA epigenetics. Finally, we will go to the RNA editor. A little bit different here is that no, uh, because RNA is one strand, there is no such thing called a knee case. We just use dead case 13 as the RNA editor partner. So far, there is only one RNA editor um, classification that is dependent on the deaminase ADA. If the S editor can change A to G, that's called a repair system. If it can change C to U, then it's called a rescue system. Now we can summarize the CRISPR function on RNA. We can use the white type of CAT13 to bind, cut, and degrade the RNA. We also can mutate the CAT13 to form dead CAT13 to recruit different activators. Different, uh, edit, uh, different action function pro effectors, such as RNA editor or RNA fluorescence. Okay, just now we talk about Cas9 and Cas13, but actually the Cas family has many members and is growing very fast recently. Different members has different specificity and also different size. It can be used in different uh, applications. I listed the commonly used protein here for you to selection. Okay, I uh, assume you already have the general picture of the CRISPR product. However, you possibly still feel confused to pick up a specific technology. Here we can be a little bit helpful. We offer the seventh pearl that's called the CRISPR Lego which is just to combine the di different functions into one platform. Let me show the example. Uh, just say you are interested in some epigenetics. So if you ha have this idea, you can connect the epigenetic enzyme and the C-terminal of the dead Cas9. Or if you are interested in activator, then you possibly will uh, recruit or insert some activator into the N terminal. And you also can load some specific genes on this plasmid on the same plasmid. When you combine all these research tools, it will form your research uh, research new tool. If you are interested in this topic, please email us. All in pearls are not wonderland. We also need the heroes and the swords. And definitely, we prepare the swords for these heroes of scientists and also researchers. These swords are just a delivery system, which helps you to send your product into your target, target cells. So far, there are three different swords. Um, one is a liposome system 
Two is a virus system, and the third is in vitro RNP system. Because of the limitation time, I have to cover up this uh, content very, very quickly. And we will have a new webinar to cover this point in detail. First, a lipotransfection system. You can use the generally used lipotransfection reagent, such as the polyjet lipofactin, to transfect Cas9 or GNA into your target cells. Second is virus delivery system. GNA and, and uh, Cas9 can be packaged into virus particle and be used to infect target cells. The third is RNP delivery system. You can purify the protein and also synthesize the GNA, and then combine them together to form complex. This complex will be used to transfect it in, some, in target cells with some special way, like electroporation method. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Welcome to this CRISPR wonderland. Here is our contact information. If you have some questions or feedback, please email us.